Hi guys, it's Sam for Digital Meat, and in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to um, uh, do back face culling in the renderer. So um, I suppose we should uh, just get start off. Okay, so I've just created a cube. I'm just going to make it <clears throat> a little bit bigger, so it's about the size of a room or something like that. I'm going to go into my side view, so it's sitting at zero, about. Okay, and then uh, what do I want to do? I want to make it editable and I'm going to choose my edge tool and um, I suppose we can make some windows. <clears throat> okay, so I'm going to choose my rectangle selection. Only select visible elements. If that's che checked on, it will only select edges that are visible and for some reason it's not even doing that oh it's because it's not on a yeah so if you click this tool you can see that tolerance selection isn't on if it's on it will just select it from getting part of it but as you can see it's not getting these behind it so take that off as well so now we should get everything lovely and then i'm gonna uh what do i want i want an edge cut I don't want to create end gons. Um, let's just apply that. So we get cut in the middle. I'm going to make that two. Uh, we don't want to offset it. That wants to be 50% again. And we can scale these. Okay, yeah, so something like that. Just to give us a window there. And I might do the same thing this side as well, actually. So go back to this, select all these. Uh, select our edge cut again same deal mm. let's scale that in a little bit okay uh, I could have had this set up before I actually started this tutorial but I thought uh, I might as well do it in it because then it shows you guys something that you might not know okay um, what do I need now now I'm gonna take my knife tool and select the plane and we don't want to cut it that way i think it's this way no it's xz i think yeah there we go so i'm just gonna make a cut there and i'm gonna make another cut there there we go so now to create my windows i'm just going to remove these polygons here and, and delete them so now we've got some kind of room type thing but uh, if you go into polygon mode and select all the polygons you'll notice that uh, the outside of it's orange which means this is the normal direction this is the positive normal direction and blue means that's the negative so this is the back face of a polygon so let's just get a camera and we'll go into that camera and reposition it so we are inside the room Come on, there you go, okay, there we go, I'm just going to move it so we're actually in the room now, okay, there we go, and I'm also going to change the camera, if I select the camera and choose the focal length, I'm going to change it to a wide angled lens so we get more of the room in shot. <clears throat> Um, okay, and as always, I'm going to go to this and grab a sky object. I'm going to go to my renderer and set the output to 24 1080 and then lock it. And just for the benefit of you guys, I'm going to drop this down to 800. So it renders quicker and it fits on the screen. Um, what else do we need? Uh, I'm going to make a material for the room as well. Um, we don't need reflection, just need to change the colour so it's a bit more white. Okay, lovely. Let's whack that on our cube. Let's make another material and call this sky. And then I'm just going to open the content browser. This will just take a few seconds because it's the first time I've opened it. Blah, 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 blah. Yes, yes, get on with it. Cool. 
Crikey, that took its time, didn't it? Okay. Um, and I'm going to search for HDRs. These come with Cinema 4D and I can use any of these, I suppose. Uh, well, first of all, in our sky material, I'm going to turn off color and reflectance. We don't need any of that. Um, what was the one that I just added in my view a minute ago? Was that it? Fine, we'll use that. We'll just lob that in the luminance channel. There we go. Um, and we'll go to our render settings. Effect. We'll turn on global illumination. And let's have a look at the result we get from that. Ah, would it actually help if I applied my material to my sky? That might help. Okay, so we're going to render out now. Okay, we've got some light coming in there. It's not very bright though. Uh, also, I don't want to see my sky, so I'm going to right click Cinema 4D tags, composite in, and I'm just going to check off scene by camera. So now we don't see the background. It's just black. There you go. Okay, right. We need to shove a little bit more light in the room. So I'm going to go to our render settings, go to global illumination. Secondary method, I'm going to choose light mapping. We'll leave it at 16 for now and just render and see what we got. Okay, a bit more light going into the room now. Mm, okay, just to clean up these jaggies here, I'm going to go to settings, go to the light mapping and uh, turn on the pre-filter and if you're 12 down you can actually up the samples of the pre-filter I'm going to change that to 16 see if we get a bit better result now <clears throat> okay mm -mm -mm -mm. yeah that'll do us for now that'll do us what, for what we need it for anyway so okay this is our scene set up I'm just going to come out the camera so we can leave it there now, when you're working on a model like this, um, uh, typically if you were making this for a game engine and you just needed a room interior because you're never going to see the outside of it or um, it's separate from the outer wall or something like that, you'd build this room. So if I select that and go to polys and select everything, you'd obviously not want the normals to be this way round. Uh, Go and get in there. There we go. Um, you'd want the normals to be facing the correct way. So if, if we were in this room, we could do select uh, Control A to select all your polys, right click, and then you'd say reverse normals. So there you go. So now we've got reverse normals now. So the inner of this room is, you know, the correct normal direction. Now, if you were working on objects in this room, because um, again, if I if I render out, you may, this is the setup you want, and it's the lighting that you want inside this room, but if you're trying to work on objects inside it, of course you could solo it out using this, whatever the object was, but what I prefer to do is right click on my cube, go to Cinema 4D tags, go to display tag, and uh, you'll see here it says back face culling and if you click use it culls the outer edge of the wall which is great you can see in and um, absolutely brilliant that's fine but the only issue with this is let me just go back to object mode um, <clears throat> when you hit render it still renders the outside face of it now what if you didn't want that what if you wanted to be able to peer into this room from any direction like this well I suppose one thing that you could do is if I select the polys here um, just take this display tag off so we're back to this again well you could remove this wall I suppose um, okay so let's uh, excuse me let's try removing that wall and mm, press the wrong one again and we'll remove this wall as well so 
Let's turn this display tag back on first. So this is what we get. Um, okay, yeah, that's fine. So that's what we get there. And then we will turn that off and remove the walls. And you'd probably have to remove the roof as well, actually, to get the same view and then render again. Now you can see that they've been removed, but the problem is we've got all this lovely lighting information from this wall here. And obviously if you remove those walls, that it's now brighter because it hasn't got any walls. So how do we get that view without having to destroy our object? So if I can tr control Z both those things that I just did, we've got our walls back. Um, there's a nice trick you can do with the, the material. So if I double click on this and go down to the alpha channel and tick it on, and then go to the texture of the alpha channel and twirl down here and go to, I think it's effects. We've got this normal direction. So if we choose this and actually go, we don't need to do anything, but um, if I go into the actual normal direction shader, you got color one white, color two black, and as most things in Cinema 4D, white is a positive, it's a positive number, and uh, black means zero. Uh, so you've got, um, so it just represents a value really, and that's in our alpha channel. So look what happens when I render now. We know the wall's there. In fact, I'll render out to the picture viewer. We know the wall's there but we're getting a transparency. So if you compare it to this and this and this, in fact, if I delete the one where I've deleted the walls, uh, remove that image, you can see that lighting information near that window has stayed exactly the same. Now, I don't know if you can see this uh, uh, because of the compression on YouTube, but you'll notice the edge of this wall is janky. And, um, in fact, let me just set up the standard, uh, the physical renderer, sorry. So I've just changed it to physical, go over to physical, adaptive low, I'm gonna change that to automatic, 20%, I'm gonna leave it on that, that should be fine. Um, so now we've got our material set up like that, let's render. Let's go back to 100%. So actually that's not too bad, the, the edge isn't too janky there. Let's see if I can get a better example of what I'm uh, talking about. Maybe if I get inside it. Um, yeah, maybe this view would be better. Yeah, you can see across this window here and, it, and oh, it's because I'm zoomed in 125%, that won't help. Um, actually, it doesn't look too bad. I'm trying to recreate an issue that I had. Uh, I'll tell you what might help. Something like that, possibly. <clears throat> no, it doesn't seem to be giving me the same problem that I was having the other day. Um, let's see if we can recreate it here. No, it doesn't seem to be too bad. I think though, if you are getting issues when it comes to, um, janky edges, um, I think by checking this shading transparency check, in the physical renderer tab in the render settings. I think that is helping me out a little. So let's just compare these just to see if there is any difference. No, not much. Well, it could have been in my imagination then. But if you are getting issues like that, check that box and uh, you may get better results. So that's it really. So you can build out your entire scene with closed boxes and get the correct light in, but you will be able to render through the back faces of those objects. So um, that's it. It was a pretty quick one, guys. But as always, don't forget, uh, don't forget to check out the site, digitalmeet.uk. You can catch me on Facebook under Digital Meet 3 d same on Twitter. Um, and uh, yeah, that's it, guys. 
Bye.